In today's lesson, we are going to take a very brief and introductory look into the brain. Your four lobes, the two hemispheres, and the hundred billion neurons that make you who you are. And so, some of this you already know uh, because you've had already a few classes with me, but it's important to repeat that you need nine and a quarter hours of sleep a night, people and that you need exercise and oxygen to have a healthy brain and to be alert and to learn. It's interesting to know that that brain of yours that really only weighs about three pounds burns 20% of your totally total calorie intake. And that explains why we feel so tired after we've come out of an exam because your brain is really burning a lot of energy. The complexity of the brain, we, we always talk about it, but it's important to to try to get your head around how amazing this uh, organ is. Here you're looking at neurons and you're seeing the connections that the neurons are making in the synapses over here. I mean with over a hundred billion neurons in our brain and each one making possible thousands of connections, synaptic connections to other neurons. So think of this, each one of these neurons can connect up to over a thousand, I think even 10,000 up to other neurons. That is an absolutely phenomenal amount of connections. And some people have even said that there are more synaptic connections in our brain than there are stars in the Milky Way. So to start with the brain, we're gonna first look at the brain stem. Now the brain stem here, as you see this part little this piece over here is really the extension of the spinal cord coming up and so you've learned that the the brain and the spinal cord are the central nervous system so the brain stem is very important um, even though it's a it's a part of the lower brain but it's really important in our uh, consciousness uh, and basic attention and arousal if there's damage to the brain stem there well, we're just not going to survive because the brainstem is where all of the information from the body comes in and then passes through the other different levels and layers of the brain. And so its functions are in really basic uh, auto autonomic uh, life functions like breathing and heart rate and swallowing and reflexes, um, sweating, blood pressure, uh, digestion our ability to sleep, our sense of balance, um, that's all connected to the brainstem. So we have three brains in one and really this is just evidence for evolution because we can see uh, at the, this hindbrain part here um, is what we share with the reptiles. The midbrain part here is what we share with other mammals and this the, the cortex, sometimes called the forebrain, this part here um, is what only the other higher mammals and primates have. And so when you look at it this way, you see this is the oldest part of evolutionary history in terms of how brains developed. And then another old part, but not as old as this. And then finally, the very fine and very advanced uh, cerebral cortex. So back to the basics here. So this is the hindbrain. So now we see this is the brain stem and the cerebellum. The cerebellum um, is Latin for little brain. And it actually has, even though it's only about 10% of the size of the, of the whole brain, it has about 50% of the neurons in the cerebellum. Uh, it's important for coordination um, balance and equilibrium and muscle tone. If you had damage to the cerebellum, well, you would have difficulty walking and staying upright and, and making any kind of coordinated movement. Here's another look at the cerebellum this way. This is a side section. So here you see this is the brain stem and all of this part here in blue is called the hind brain. And the hindbrain is what we share with other uh, reptiles, um, other uh, vertebrates, and it controls, the hindbrain controls hunger, temperature control, 
that fight or flight response that we've been talking about and um, it consists of this sort of very basic brain consists of the cerebellum that we've seen here the medulla here the pons and the reticular formation so don't worry too much about um, the reticular formation because really we're just going to be learning about the medulla and the cerebellum here's a um, very good visual of this is the brain stem and the medulla and the pons here and the cerebellum so uh, the medulla which links the spinal cord actually to the brain is involved in the regulating essential uh, body functions such as I said heartbeat breathing blood blood, pr blood pressure digestion and swallowing and that's why if you have damage to the medulla it can result in uh, instant death a drug overdose uh, that might suppress the functioning here of the medulla will also obviously lead to death and right above that you have the pons and so along with the medulla the pons is really the passageway for neural signals going from uh, the rest of the body uh, up to the other parts of the brain and um, it is also uh, involved in sleep and dreaming. The limbic system uh, that literally um, sits on top of uh, the hindbrain is made up of the hypothalamus uh, that we see here the amygdala that we're going to spend a lot of it, a uh, fair bit of time talking about, that you've already seen the difference in the teenage brain and the adult brain in uh, in the amygdala. Also, um, the hippocampus here, which is responsible for memory creation, and the thalamus, which is sort of like the relay center um, for all of the information that has come in through the brainstem, the thalamus is kind of like, I think of them like the taxi dispatch office that sends uh, the information, relative and important information to the, to the appropriate parts of uh, the brain and the frontal lobe we'll talk about in a minute. So the limbic system, when you hear this, I want you to think of uh, emotions and this is a pretty good uh, visual of, of what it looks like uh, almost like a cage sort of and where it sits deep on the in the inside of the brain so here we have um, a color-coded picture of what we've just been talking about so here's the cerebellum here's the brain stem this is the medulla uh, the uh, limbic system that we've just been talking about and now we're going to get into uh, the forebrain. So the forebrain is what makes us different from the rest of the animals in the world. It allows us to have complex social interactions and develop language and invent uh, iPhones and Blackberries and all the other amazing technologies that we have. Um, it is uh, the largest of all of the uh, primates and that's probably because of our language functions. And so this frontal lobe here, here you have all of the cortex, all of our lobes. And here's the cerebellum and here's the brainstem. And so in the frontal lobe, really this is uh, th the place where all of the um, decisions and the planning and the thinking uh, are happening. Also, uh, a certain amount of emotional uh, regulation. The frontal lobe is what uh, understands uh, complex social behavior, uh, sexual uh, behavior as well. And so, uh, if you have damage to the frontal lobe, it's going to change your personality um, almost completely. So here you can uh, pause the, uh, the video and read this slide here. Some of the problems that uh, result when we have damage to the frontal lobe. And as I've already said, it is uh, the, the core of our personality and 
uh, it will cause, if, if damage happens, cause um, dramatic disorders in, in, in mood. The um, left hemisphere, we're not going to talk about the right hemisphere just yet, but the left hemisphere is important because that's where all the speech happens. Um, also in the frontal uh, lobe. And so I want you to take a look at these two areas here. One is called Broca's area and the other one's called Wernicke's area. And uh, Broca's area is responsible for the actual uh, production of uh, speech, being able to actually pr uh, make words, sounds that are intelligible. And Wernicke's area here is responsible for understanding. And if any of these two areas are damaged, well, language and speech are going to be severely impaired. It's interesting here to note that the Wernicke's area here, which is responsible for the understanding of speech, myelinates before the Broca's area. And you remember that myelination is that white substance that um, on the axon that allows the nerve impulse to travel faster down the axon. And if myelination is uh, damaged, then there um, is going to be a severe impairment to the ability of the neurons to transmit the message from one neuron to another. And so areas that are highly myelinated are very effective. So I think this is interesting because if Wernicke's area myelinates before Broca's, that pretty much explains why we can understand the language before we can actually start uh, making sentences and speaking it. And so we have one of these uh, disorders called Broca's aphasia, where there's damage to Broca's area, and a person with this will be able to understand what is being said, because remember, Wernicke's area is for understanding, but not be able to uh, actually express or um, articulate what it is that they're understanding. Um, back to the, the this whole thing here is the cerebral cortex. So we've seen the brainstem, the cerebellum. We've looked at the frontal lobe. Now we're going to talk about the parietal lobe here in the back. And it, this is involved in sensation and uh, perception. Also with uh, uh, being able to sort of like integrate and understand all of the uh, input coming in. Uh, the uh, input, the auditory input from the temporal lobes and the visual input from the uh, occipital lobes. So this is where we, uh, the functions of the parietal lobe, location for the visual attention and for touch perception, um, where we uh, are able to uh, integrate all of the different information from the other lobes coming in and to be able to understand a single concept. And the temporal lobe, right above the ears here. This is for hearing. So the um, the stimulus, so the sound waves coming into the ear. So the auditory information coming into the brain will first come into um, the temporal lobe before it is um, dispatched to other areas so that we can make sense of the sound. And we're going to continue in class with the um, rest of uh, the brain structures and fine tune some of our understanding of um, the, uh, the, the different uh, structures of the brain in class. Um, I'm going to take just a couple of seconds and ask you to uh, build this brain with me. And so now I'm on the Hope's Brain Tutorial site and that's linked for you on the wiki. And we're going to add a piece and see if you can uh, pause the video and uh, identify what part of the brain what what this is called so pause your label your video now before I turn the label on and so hopefully you got that that the medulla the pons and the midbrain and we'll add another piece and you see there that that is the cerebellum I've added another piece, and this is, let's see if you can guess, take a moment, pause the video. It's the thalamus, and I'll add another piece. 
and so you might not be able to easily recognize this but eventually you'll be able to recognize them quickly so this is the hippocampus where the memories are formed and the hypothalamus well we'll talk about that in a future class and um, this these are the the ventricles where the cerebral spinal fluid is created and also sits and that's the thing that allows your brain to have the buoyancy that it has and we don't have to worry about that and we're not going to worry about that and the amygdala this is the um, the part of the brain where we know that uh, responsible for strong emotions like fear and uh, aggression and this is the the thinking part of our brain um, the neocortex where we have uh, finally uh, arrived and that's the end of the lesson